Welcome to Art Talk Bus Stop. I am Juan, a senior here at Reynolds High School. I'm Esmeralda. I'm also a senior here at Reynolds High School. And in the gallery, I'm Nicole. And I'm Emily. And I'm Erica, here helping produce. And I'm Katie Sullivan, the art teacher. And we are joined here today by our lovely guest, Leif J. Lee. Hey, everyone. Thanks for having me. For those who aren't already familiar with you, who are you and what do you do? Um, well, let's see. I'm from Washington State, and I've been living in Portland, Oregon for the last, I think, six or seven years. I came here to go to Pacific Northwest College of Art to get my MFA degree. And what I do is I'm an interdisciplinary artist, so that just means I do a lot of different type of things. Uh, but I mostly focus on doing drawing and painting. And the last couple years, my favorite medium of choice has been working on fabric. So I will do hand-drawn fabric patterns uh, that I sometimes will do large yardage of hand-painted fabrics that I cut and sew into bags and accessories and um, sculptures and just kind of all over the map. And then I also run like an online shop of my hand-dyed and hand-drawn clothing. So each piece that I make is made to order. They're one-offs, they're one-of-a-kind. And that's most of the art making that I've been doing these days. Are your commissions your only like source of income at the moment or what else do you do? Uh, they are a big part of my income, but I also will take work from clients. So I'll do a lot of client work that can vary from doing commercial tie dyeing projects or something that I've done, or I did a project where I designed astrology garments for a psychic sister, a store in Portland and in Olympia, Washington. And sometimes I'm I'm hired to do like fabric installations. Yeah, so it's it's kind of a mix between selling my own my own designs and or creating commissions for people or doing client work. I also do sometimes if I need to get like some extra money to make the ends meet, I will do like odd jobs and do things like cleaning and um, running things to the dump <laughs> it's kind of like i'll be like your helper for hire <laughs> what's one of the most odd jobs you've had so far oh, the oddest one well when i was in school at pnca i spent i would spend summers doing odd jobs and i never knew what i was gonna do and sometimes like somebody would contact me I'm like hey i need some i need some help doing something and can you meet me in this room at this time and I would just kind of show up and and they at first it seemed odd because they handed me these like tiny little white gloves and and I was like what am I be doing with these why do I have to wear these <laughs> and it turned out that it was just because I needed to handle um, photography so some they were printing these large-scale prints and they needed somebody to handle that so that I wasn't getting fingerprints all over their wonderfully gorgeous photos <laughs> you mentioned astrology is that something you're like interested in yeah i'm interested in it i'm i wouldn't call myself a expert by any means um i think of myself as an armchair astrologer <laughs> so somebody who just is i i'm i'm interested in it it's a hobby i do really enjoy researching and i kind of always have when i was a lot younger i used to read horoscopes out of the the daily papers and things like that and I think progressively over the years I've gotten more and more interested in it um, for this project that I did with Psychic Sister I was really excited about taking a lot of the like imagery that's connected to the sign for example whether it's the symbol of Aries for example or the symbol that's associated with the planets that are working with the sign um, like the ruling planets and that kind of thing like I really had fun with working with those symbols and kind of abstracting them and playing with line and kind of trying to turn turn those lines into all over patterns on fabrics um, yeah but I, I I do really like thinking about astrology and like the moon and things like that <laughs>
Um, so actually, I was on your Instagram because um, I kind of wanted to get to know more about you and kind of like what kind of person you are. And you have a Patreon, yeah? Yes, I do. So you have like certain tiers and stuff. And I believe you did stuff with astrology. You made these videos. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I did make those videos. I watched them and I was like, oh, this is, you know, I love this. This is great. Can you like kind of give more about that? Yeah. So the videos... I had an idea when I first was getting started with Patreon, when I first kind of like, I left my day job as a, as a barista Mm -hmm. to do this full time. And I was pretty anxious. So I was thinking like, I have to be doing so many things. And I really was like, I'm going to do a video for every sign. And I'm going to create a, like, I'm going to create these designs for Psychic Sister. And I'm going to do all these different things. And, and the videos were really fun because I didn't really know what I was doing. I was very experimental with it, which is something I really, really enjoy about art making is experimenting. So I experimented with uh, creating the soundtrack. And I just did that in GarageBand on my computer. And I never really used GarageBand. Mm-hmm. And so I just like really played with trying to find how to use the application and how to play with um, different beats and things like that and learn about how to create a loop. And and so I would kind of spend some time working on the soundtrack. And then I also would take different video clips Mm -hmm. of myself, depending on the sign and depending on the weather and the location um, that I was at, like I would go and just sort of like set up my phone somewhere. Mm-hmm. I didn't have a tripod at the time, so sometimes it was like a cinder block in my backyard. I just sort of prop <laughs> it up and then try to see if I could get a good enough angle and then um, just kind of like moving around. Yeah, and I noticed that. Yeah, <laughs> and I just Great, kind yeah. of like dance and have uh-huh. fun and try to keep it really, really light mm-hmm. and and not too serious because if I get too serious, I won't. You're gonna get attacked I'll, by just like certain signs. Yeah. You'll be like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Then I would take those video clips and also learn about how to use iMovie, mm-hmm. um, and and then I learned a lot about how to just kind of through experimenting with those videos, how to create a video on my own and teach myself how to do that. So then I would take those different clips and kind of like cut them up, and then I would I would add that that music that I made and I would try to kind of time the moves that I was making mm, in the yeah. video to the music and and then just kind of playing around with yeah. like the the features because you can add text and mm. then I figured out you could add emojis and I was like this is really fun and I tried to just kind of use like a collage kind of um, approach to the video making so I haven't really done all the signs yet because it turned out to be really time consuming Mm -hmm. and each time I tried (laughs) to like do all of this work I was just bit off more than I could chew which is an Aries trait because I'm an Aries and Mm -hmm. I really like to jump in head first (laughs) and just go for it and I really enjoy that part of my personality but oftentimes I realize oh wow this is actually a huge undertaking (laughs) so I've thought about making some more though you think I should yeah I think you should they're I love them they're they're great they're great to watch okay cool (laughs) how would you say you seek out opportunities for like your art like maybe getting it out there maybe even like promoting it you know Mm -hmm. well I think that a lot of times the reason that I get a lot of opportunities is really just from Instagram. And I share a lot of my process. I document a lot of what I'm doing and I share it in my stories. I'll share posts on my timeline that are kind of like either works in progress or finished pieces. I try to just be really um, transparent about what I'm doing. And I think that through that consistency, a lot of times people will come across me via Instagram and and see something I'm working on and and I think a lot of times with like um, some of these commercial or like clients that I've picked up it's like they see that I'm capable of doing a certain thing like the dyeing of shirts for example and then they'll think oh it would be really neat if we could have like a whole bunch of tie-dyed clothes in our shop or something and so then they'll approach me with those kinds of ideas um so I think as of now uh the social media has really become a way that I can really sort of span a lot of different types of people because there's so many different 
types of people on the internet you know there's like people who are just like my friends and there's like businesses and corporations and and people who work for production companies and that kind of thing so it's a really good way to kind of get what i'm doing out there speaking about social media i i I was flipping through yours as well and i saw you went to japan i did yeah how was that for you oh my gosh it was so mind-blowing because i i've always wanted to go to japan and when I was younger, I just remember people saying, like, what do you think would be, like, the most culture shock, scary place to go? And I was like, Tokyo, it just looks terrifying. Like, it's so big and such a huge city. And I feel like I would just get swallowed up and get lost. And then I wouldn't know how to speak the language. And so I'd probably just, like, die in the street or something. And then, um, so it's always been a dream of mine to go. And uh, it, so when I when I got to go, I was amazed because I've also been really afraid of flying. <laughs> so I had to do a lot of things to kind of get ready to face my fear of just the flying and being there. But uh, once I got there, it was uh, it was so wonderful because it was probably the most calming place I've ever been, <laughs> which is very interesting because there's so much like so many people. It's like one of the largest cities in the world, and but there's something really peaceful about about the way everybody's kind of flowing through the public transit and walking down the street and restaurants and things like that. It was a hugely inspirational trip for me. I I ended up doing like an entire collection of garments just based on the 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 map that I got that was like the transit map because <laughs> I was so interested in all the lines and all the colors because there's so many um, different transits that are occurring at the same time and when they handed me the map it's all written in Japanese and I was like I don't know how to get from here to there at all but when I started understanding how everything's color-coded that really helped me to because I'm so interested in color and and so I ended up kind of creating this whole line work um, called the reroute line that I did in a lot of my clothing etc so it was a really good trip I feel so lucky to go. I hope you can go. <laughs> Would you ever go back? Oh, yeah. Uh, instantly. I'm still thinking about when can I go back. And I, it's funny, on my drive out here, I was driving past the airport, and I said aloud, oh, I want to go to Japan. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, I definitely want to go back. I'm going to start saving my nickels and dimes. Have you had any memorable responses from your artwork? Oh, yeah. Some of the most memorable things come from my commission work with clothing. Like I've had people reach out to me that are saying, you know, I'm going through this really big transition and I really love your art, but I feel like I don't know if I can make it through this time. It's like my, I'm really heartbroken. Can you help me by drawing up something that I can wear? And whenever I put it on, I'll know that like, I'm going to make it through this time. And so we talked a little bit about, it was very simple. Like the design that we ended up kind of talking about and when she told me what she wanted I just drew up something really simple and she has you know messaged me and said you know this really helped me through a hard time knowing that I could put the shirt on when I was scared or when I was sad I could put the shirt on and I knew that you made it and that made me feel connected to you which made me feel not alone and things like that just are so special to me because I think that art you know can really impact obviously each other and and something that's like really intimate around like a hard time. I, that's kind of why I really enjoy working with clothing and fabrics is like they're soft and they're malleable and they're a lot like like us, you know? And I think that I know that I get a lot from like what if I'm feeling kind of cruddy, like if I put on my favorite shirt, I feel better, <laughs> <laughs> that kind of thing. So I really, I love those kind of moments working with commissions where people let me know like oh, I just feel so happy every time I wear this bag around or whatever <laughs> what's your artistic outlook on life oh gosh oh that's kind of <laughs> a cool question a little bit of a big one yeah um I made a sticker recently that says radical queer joy and it's got this big rainbow on it and there's also some like clouds and and lightning bolts because it's a little bit of a, a storm out there. And I think that I really want to bring um, like a feeling of connection for people. And I want to bring the concept of joy because the world is pretty harsh. And 
there's um, a lot of challenges for a lot of different people. A lot of us are really struggling and I really want to bring creativity. I want to bring a spirit of experimentation and color and something that's not really like something that's maybe not from like a cookie cutter sort of system where everything's like mass produced everyone's disconnected from the process from themselves and everyone's kind of trying to seek belonging and connection and I want to bring art into the world that feels like people feel connected to something or whether even if it's just the process and knowing like oh I know the person who made this thing for me I think that that really kind of cuts between the the mass production that's going on um, so yeah, I think I just want to bring color and and joy and connection. Uh, I don't want to like offend you, but you identify as queer, right? Yeah. Yeah. Would you would you say like the LGBT like it has a big part in the art world? Yeah, definitely huge. And I think, I, like, do you mean like are there really incredible queer artists? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Yeah, I think almost all my favorite artists are queer, and. You know, when I was growing up, it was not safe for me to come out. And and nowadays, you know, I think about, like, when I was a senior in high school, I was extremely closeted. And I didn't really know. I think I knew one gay person, like, in my school. And she was, she was like, really made fun of. And there was a lot of bullying going on. And so I think that, like, the way that things have changed and how many queer people now are uh, supported in creating their art and there's a lot of funding and programming and support and community that I think has really grown from in the last, like, 20 years or so, I would say. There's a lot of space and a lot of room for queer artists, for sure. How do you overcome that negativity that's, like, brought upon you? it's art really like the art that I create you know sometimes I take a lot of my emotion out into the art um and sometimes that looks like really messy and really explosive and like I don't care how this looks I'm so upset or whatever (laughs) and then I see that and I'm thinking for an example of like some of my hand-painted fabrics that are just like really colorful that are really splattered there's nothing like perfect about it at all and And after I first created that fabric, that whole fabric that I created was like based on me having a hard time around queer things and emotions and frustration. And and so I just sort of like created this big piece of fabric as a way to just like get it out before I did what I really needed to do that day. And then when I was done, I was looking at it. I was like, how can I turn this into something really useful? How can I turn this into something that's going to like brighten people's days and and that's when I was like I'm gonna turn this into a bag (laughs) I didn't know how to sew a bag at the time and I I was really like teaching myself new things and so I was like I'm gonna teach myself how to sew a bag I'm gonna use this fabric and this is now gonna be my new thing so like I I really use art as a way to channel a lot of that um, a lot of those hard feelings into the process of making art Uh, was art something you used like used to like cope or like was something you were always interested in that you knew you wanted to do right away I know that it started initially with uh, as a way to cope because I some of my earliest memories are of being this little kid that had this like big stack of like paper that was like I think in the recycling and I would just grab my crayons and I would draw like these rolling hills with these tulips and the sunshine in the sky with these little like sunglasses on the sun. There's just like boxes and boxes and boxes of like the same drawing. And <laughs> and I think that like it, it like started really early for me as a way of coping of just like I was a very like visual person. I was a very like sensitive kid and I just would go someplace where I could sit by myself alone away from all the hard stuff and just draw. So that's always definitely been with me. You know, what's cool is now you can make a career out of it. I didn't think you could do that when I was little. I thought it was just like a funny quirk. (laughs) What would you say is the best piece of advice you've ever been given? Hmm. Well, the best piece of advice I've been given around making art is is to make it. (laughs) And to make a lot of it. And... You know, when I was uh, I was at the Evergreen State College in Olympia, Washington, and I, I had a little a grant to take some 
some classes there. So I took some art classes and I remember just like there was like this big piece of paper and and I made this big drawing and it was like such an undertaking for me. And I was like, I can't believe I did this draw, this one drawing, you know, it was like such a big deal. It took so much time. And and then I came to PNCA, the art college in, that I mentioned, and you know, I would do like one drawing and, and my mentor at the time was like, okay, and I make a hundred of these. And I was like, what? <laughs> That's crazy. You know, but it, she, t- she was trying to teach me just like make a lot of art and just keep making it. And, you know, the more you make, the more you'll have an idea of your voice and what you're trying to say and what the materials are trying to say. And she really encouraged me to. And so I think just like making art and experimenting with materials and not really trying to make the perfect painting all the time or the perfect drawing or only make one, you know, just just make a lot. But advice around just kind of like how to do this, how to have this have this job as an artist. I think a lot of that has been around creating habits that are kind of like money stuff and, and tracking spending and, and doing the math and just kind of like, how much is this material? You know, how much was this material? How long did I work on it? So how much does this cost? Really simple things that, you know, as an artist, I thought, oh, this is just all I do is I'll just paint and draw the rest of my life. But there's this huge thing that nobody really ever told me about, which is why I'm telling you is uh, I wish someone would have told me this at the time. It's just like you do actually have to use those math skills, you know, and you got to you got to write those things down. It's maybe not as much as doing like algebra or (laughs) but, you know, simple addition will get you far. (laughs) Rather than advice, like what are some experiences you had that influenced like your art? Hmm. Well, traveling, I mean, I've gotten to do, I've gotten to go to Japan and that is a big deal, <laughs> a big trip and all this, but even just like, just kind of like, even if it's just like going to Mount Hood or something and taking a hike or going on a little day trip or taking a couple hours to go see like a really, like an interesting film or something like a lot of my inspiration comes from just kind of like getting out of my regular routine and those kind of things are really helpful. Just even going to like the Portland Museum of Art or Portland Art Museum, they have um, they have like a free night, and going um, going there and looking around has been really influential. So yeah, like looking at art, taking little adventures, or doing things like even even things that I think aren't connected to my art if I really think about it they are you know like if it's like comics that I read or like tv shows that I watch or like things where I think I'm like oh this doesn't count you know this is just this goofy Netflix thing I'm watching but if I really think about it like the humor is affecting the way that I approach art or so it's kind of like taking those opportunities to really look at the world around me all over the place is inspiring uh, I know also you're involved in curating and, and you do that for as part of your career. Um, and the students at, at ROCA here at Reynolds, uh, they're heavily involved in curating as well. What Can you share with us how curating has also influenced your art? Yeah, that I, I, I don't know why I forget that I do that sometimes, but you're right, I do. Uh, yeah, I curate to uh, cafes in town and... It's been really cool to work with artists and see how other artists work and and see the see the ways that they frame their art, see the ways that they approach installing their art, seeing what they're working on, seeing how they promote themselves, just like the conversations we have while we're installing the art is I get a lot of a lot of really cool information from that. But really it's like knowing that I have a community of artists to be um that I'm involved in and you know I think sometimes as artists we're you know feeling a little bit like on the outside maybe and I think that the community aspect of like finding other artists or even reading about other artists or watching documentaries about how artists work anything like that it helps me to feel like a little bit less anxiety in a way because I think sometimes the culture is kind of like, get back to work. What are you doing scribbling? <laughs> you know, and, and when I think about the long history of artists and the huge community of artists, it feels more supportive to 
to to focus on it. Um, so yeah, I think that the conversations that I get to have when we're hanging the art shows is is really is a big place that I get a lot of inspiration. Yeah, it's also just fun too to see the different ways that I feel like artists from my a little bit of my secret research <laughs> when I'm installing art shows. I've been doing it for I think three or four years, and it's two artists a month, and. I feel like artists e are either very meticulous about the way they hang their art shows, where they're, they're using measurements and they're using their calculator and they're like getting very particular, or they're just kind of, oh, let's just eyeball it and let's put it over here. And I, I feel like it's, it's very similar to, to kind of like how they work as artists, I feel like, is how they hang their shows. And, and you know, I work in, a, in cafes, so it's, it's a little less um, meticulous as, as like a... A proper gallery I would say but I I think that it's cool because a lot of different people at different points in their careers can hang art in cafes and some people have their very first art shows in the cafes that I curate and sometimes people from museums show in the cafe so anybody can speaking of the cafe you worked as a barista yeah how was that for you oh I loved it I love coffee. <laughs> I love coffee. And I really enjoyed like the the public interaction. And there at every cafe I've ever worked at, there's always like the best regulars and um and I always learn so much about my community. I feel connected to like my neighborhood and and I like that as an additional piece of just like actually like learning a lot about the ins and outs of coffee. When I very first was a barista, there wasn't very much. Uh, it was a lot different than, than the way it is now. And there's so much science to it, which I, I find to be really interesting. And it's a really creative uh, occupation, too, because you get to, you know, make lattes and, and perfect different things about it and learn about steamy milk and the craft behind beans and all there's just there's a lot of interesting pieces to it uh, so I really as an artist I'm very like very multitasking so like when I'm in my studio I have you know one thing going on over here I got my computer open over here and then I'm drawing this and then I'm like hanging up this and I'm taking pictures of that and it's a lot like being a barista or it's like I'm taking this person's order and I'm steaming this milk and I'm washing the dishes and so I think that kind of like energy was nice and it was cool too because it was like a a pretty flexible schedule so that I could always keep making art uh, on the side and fill my orders for my online shop or when I was a student um, I could still do my homework and that kind of thing. Leaf, do you have any questions for the students? Oh, I would love to know anything about what either of you are working on right now. Currently I'm not working on anything like too major but I will have a piece in the art show. What's the piece? What are you hoping the piece will be? Uh, it's a little more of like abstractish type art that I usually do. It's mostly just what I've been feeling over the, like maybe the past month or so, and I kind of just emulate that on my canvas. Awesome. Cool. How about you? Uh, at the moment, I don't have anything I'm working on either, but uh, I've been really wanting to like try screen printing. Yeah. It was something I've been really interested in, and like I really want to see what that's like. Yeah, that'd be fun. Um, you know... I just finished up working on stamps and I actually made a carousel and it's something that I want to do in my next painting which I love landscape and that's kind of something I want to incorporate but uh, I guess my inspiration would be from you know it sounds kind of funny but from Grey's Anatomy um, what's her name Meredith's mother she had this one quote where it's like the carousel never stops turning and like mm. I was just so inspired by it because I was like you know that's it's really true life never stops going on yeah I like that I am uh, in a group called Roca, and we're currently working on making the art show, so we're getting that all ready. Cool. Um, do you guys want to uh, let people know how to find your art online? I have an Instagram account. It's just my name, so it's at Leaf J. Lee, and there's a link there that will take you to a lot of the different things I'm working on. I'm also going to be launching a new website. That'll be leafjlee.com. It's still up now, and it looks great, but the next one's going to be even better. <laughs> uh, and you can follow us on Instagram at Reynolds Art Show. Great. Thanks for being here. Thanks so Thank much for so having much. me.